And with that, we say welcome to a very special Up to Speed Live from the Leadership Forum today. Hans, of course, will be joining us as we gear up to finish strong in Q4, our opening video there. It's a new spot that debuted this past weekend. Uh, you saw those words, Verizon versus Verizon. Our Verizon versus Verizon campaign shows how we are the ones who set the standards when it comes to network superiority and reliability. Shout out to our marketing team uh, for creating such a wonderful uh, spot right there. Uh, once again, live from the Leadership Forum means, of course, Hans is standing by. So let's take that lower third right now. If you've got a question for Hans and our leaders, the email is live at verizon.com. We'll be standing by to monitor these questions uh, as we keep our time together today as interactive as possible. Uh, we have some 5G news to share with you today. Uh, Verizon's 5G home internet is expanding uh, to Minneapolis and St. Paul. Shout out to the Twin Cities. And with this announcement comes the introduction of new cutting edge 5G equipment. It's called the 5G Internet Gateway. So that's eight 5G home internet cities with Minneapolis and St. Paul. Uh, the Twin Cities 5G home launch is set for this Thursday Thursday, October 1st in two days, and we will have more on this announcement Thursday on Up to Speed. Now, let's go live to the Leadership Forum. You may remember some unforgettable moments from our last forum earlier this year. We are slated for another forum in November. So as September draws to a close, uh, let's all think about what we should focus on and what makes this particular Leadership Forum so important for our team. With that, Hans, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for joining us on Up to Speed Live. Thank you, Andy. Great to be here. And uh, from the virtual, virtual leadership forum that we have today, uh, and great to have all the V-teamers joining right now. So uh, first and foremost, before I come into a little bit what we're doing here, I mean, the safety and uh, the health of the V-teamers still is the number one. Uh, we still have uh, a challenging situation uh, across uh, the country and across the globe. So. Uh, for everyone working in the field, stores or field engineers, please uh, be careful. And also a shout out to the teams that are working with some of the large natural disasters that we have at the same time. If it's fires in California or hurricanes, there are too many of them at the same time. And many of our employees are there to see that the vital infrastructure of communication is actually working. So thank you for doing all that. Uh, a couple of other things. Last week I was on uh, the Up to Speed. I talked about it's the UN week. And this time it's not one week. It's actually spreading over two weeks. And uh, I've had several different type of uh, participation in the UN week. And uh, we had uh, last week two uh, big events. One hosted by Verizon together with the UN Foundation. Uh, talking to some 10 CEOs. How we in, from the private sector can support the sustainable development goals. Uh, and uh, what we should uh, do in order to work in the private public part partnerships because we are in unheard of times uh, and uh, if you remember the sustainable development goals were the goals that was uh, approved and supported by 193 member, member countries of the UN 2015 and uh, and they are going up to 2030. They are everything from seeing that everybody has health care, food, education, uh, justice. It's just a widespread of 17 targets that is, is actually should make this world a better place for each and every one. The unfortunate situation is, of course, that we are further away to reaching those targets because of the pandemic, because of the economical downturn and also the, the racial injustice we see. So we are in a, in a situation where there is actually even further way to reach the targets to make this planet a better place. So that's why we spend time with the CEOs and see what the private sector can do. I think we as a company, we have decided for our uh, uh, Ver Ver Citizen Verizon, which have three big areas that we work with, human prosperity, uh, climate actions, and of course the digital inclusion. Those are the three that is straight up in our strategy and part of our strategy to address. And I will not go through them right now, but that is what we have been talking about. I also will have more uh, conversation this week with, in, during the UN week about what we are doing, but also listening to others. It's a lot about sharing when it comes to that. Uh, two things, you mentioned one of them from our network team, and remember what I said when we came out in the second quarter, that the second half of 2020 is probably one of the most important 
uh, sort of times for us when it comes to execution. We are laying the foundation for a future growth. And uh, you heard Andy talking about the 5G home, that now we are finally coming out with a new router that is uh, totally different than we're launching two more cities. We have more cities to come. Last week, we also announced three more cities when it comes to 5G mobile edge compute. So now we're five sites. And uh, this is important part of our strategy and the narrative going into the second half. And that leads me into what we're doing here at the Leadership Forum. We are talking a couple of, first of all, an update what is happening since uh, we met in May with the leaders. Uh, and they're happening so much and we're doing so much, so it's hard to grasp it. But clearly, we as a company has progressed quite quite good in a very difficult times. Uh, we have been discussing also these executions that we're doing right now that are so fundamental for us when it comes to our future as a company, how we deliver to our customers, how we deliver to our shareholders. So we're spending a lot of time on that in the, in the morning session. In the afternoon session, we're going to spend even more time on, on employees and society. First of all, we're going to talk about the pulse. We have the 300, 350 uh, leaders of the company on the leadership forum. We're going to talk about the result of the pulse, what we're doing, the actions we're taking. And I want to say to all the V-teamers, thank you again for uh, being part of the pulse, because the data we have and the feedback we have from all of you will make us a better company and a better employer. So let's continue that conversation. We will also com com come back to uh, the racial injustice. The last time we had our conversation uh, in, uh, in May at Leadership Forum, that was the time where uh, we reached an epicenter of all this racial in injustice. And, and of course, we have continued as a company to both have the conversation internally, doing things externally. And I personally, I probably met some 15 CEOs uh, from the civil society, listen to them, what they think a private sector should do or not. I promise that I going to listen a lot and, uh, and we have aligned with them where they think is important for us. Of course, career development uh, and of course uh, seeing that everybody has the same chance is obvious. Procurement for minority owned businesses is important and we're doing a lot in that. We founded the one, billion, one, one of the founding members of the one billion dollar round table which is procurement for minority owned businesses. That's sort of how we can amplify that. We have also talked about financing, how minority-owned business can be financed, and I'm happy to report that our team has been working to, together with some of the largest banks here in the United States, Bank of America, to launch the first ever bond uh, for minority-owned businesses that was launched last week, and I have to thank our team to actually working with that. So we continue the conversation, and as I said so many times before, I mean, we are not done and we are not saying that we're perfect. We have done a lot of work so far, but the bar is just much higher. Diversity and inclusion is part of our core values. It makes our company a better company. It better makes us as a better employer. It makes us as a better uh, 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 customer interaction because we are diverse. So it makes us just so much better. So we're going to continue for that. And this is just a pro process that we continue with. And I thank all of, all of you to be so engaged in the conversations and moving this forward. That's a short summary of what we're doing here, and we're going to have one of the uh, external speakers here talking about that, uh, that we're going to bring in here in the afternoon. So back to you, Andy. Hans, thank you so much. Uh, that momentum is huge, and the hunger to succeed in Q4, huge. Uh, I want to follow up with some questions for you here, uh, and already from our uh, live at Verizon.com mailbox, we got one from Charles here, um, yeah, tech support, VCG team. Uh, what can you share about one of your favorite leadership principles? And I'll add to that, how can we take those leadership principles and, and apply them to our Q4 priorities? <laughs> my... my <laughs> One of my favorite leadership principles is curiosity, to be curious, because ultimately, if you're going to be a leader, you need to know as much as possible on the people you're leading. And I think that if you're not curious enough, you're not dedicated to be a great leader. So I think that's usually the word I use. Then I have my leadership principles by leading yourself, leading the people around you, and strategic leadership that we sort of are infusing in our leadership edge training. And by the way, we just kicked off the second season of, season of leadership 
beds for the leaders, for 15,000 leaders in our company. So we continue on that because this is something we continue to evolve in this company, is the leadership, because that's nothing that is fixed or stagnant. It has to be a movement. But curious is a good word if you want to be a leader, because if you're curious enough, you're going to learn about others, you're going to learn how to manage, and you're how, how you're going to learn how to lead. Well, Charles was curious enough to ask that question. So, Charles, thank you very much for that question. We spent much of the morning, Hans, talking about empathetic leadership, empathy for our customers, for our employees, for our colleagues. Um, when we think about it within the scope of our customers, how can we continue showing up for our customers, especially as we round out an unprecedented historic year? Now, sometimes, you know, it is such a unprecedented time we live in and sometimes you you, you live in this, so you, you almost believe it's normal. But we are not in a normal time. I mean, it's a pandemic that is uh, taking a toll on people's lives. Uh, it's just amazingly uh, tough and bad for families. And then an economic downturn. So many people that has actually a very tough situation in this moment and, and, uh, and diversity uh, sort of or, uh, or dividend is, is actually more pronounced in these times. So it's, it's a really tough time. And then, of course, uh, the racial injustice. So I think that empathy is important for us as a company. Many of the decisions we're taking right now, they're going to be seen and perceived for years to come. That's why it's so important to have the four stakeholders in front of you when you take decisions, thinking long term on the decisions you're taking. I think I have to thank uh, the leadership team and the whole company because so far we have really dedicated ourselves to thinking the four stakeholders and take decisions that are long term for our company. And that's going to be important for us. And that's how you show empathy for the society, for our customers, for our employees, for us, and of course to the society. And we will continue to do so. This is not the 110 meter dash. This is a marathon we're into because we we, we don't really know when this will end. We just need to continue to work in this environment and see that we're supporting each other and our partners. It is certainly a marathon, and when we hashtag run with Hans, uh, we are certainly right behind you, making sure uh, we're keeping pace there. Um, Hans, as we uh, draw our conversation here to a close, um, just the biggest takeaways uh, for our leaders entering Q4, and frankly, uh, all of us, the entire V team, we're all leaders, so uh, takeaways for all of us uh, to finish strong. I think the excitement uh, we feel here and uh, among the, uh, the, the leaders on this virtual uh, leadership forum and hopefully with all the V team is of course that we are in a really good position even though we are in unprecedented time. And the possibilities that we have built for ourselves with the Verizon 2.0 and what is top on that. I think that many of us feel very excited over that. I think that I and I think that many others feel excited how we have been dealing uh, with these uh, unprecedented times and thinking about the four stakeholders. It makes us a better company. It makes us feeling proud of the company and hopefully that everyone feels that. And we will continue with do that, with doing that. And if anybody feels we're not dealing with that in the right way, uh, please reach out to us. Well, we have every channel open for communication, asking questions. You can reach out to any leader to ask your question, including myself, because we want to make this the right things in, in this uh, unheard of, unprecedented times that we live in through. So I think that's what's exciting me. And as I said before, the second half of 2020 is uh, execution time for us. And we're really putting the foundation for the future. Um, and uh, I'm super excited over it, even though we are in special times. Absolutely. Hans, thank you, as always, uh, for your continued leadership here. And thank you for giving us a sneak peek uh, into the leadership forum. Uh, and, of course, uh, the wind in our sails today uh, as we continue to move forward together. Hans, thank you. Um, as we close uh, this session of Up to Speed, before we go, a few things to tell you about. Let's take that slide here. Uh, tomorrow we have part two of our Inside Verizon LinkedIn Live series. Our very own Diana Alviar will be teaching Ready and Relaxed Public speaking and performance at 1 p.m. Eastern. Learn how to be at your best when presenting virtually. Note to self, I'm going to talk to Diana about making sure I uh, clean up this presentation here. All right. And as well as, uh, in addition, it's an exciting time, of course, uh, for 5G devices. Uh, we have seen some very innovative devices this year, but you probably haven't seen a phone do this.
So as we say, until next time, live from the Leadership Forum, uh, let's roll this video as George introduces us to the LG Wing 5G UW. Have a good one. Introducing the LG Wing. This is the most insane phone I've ever used. No, it's not a phone that transforms into a drone. It doesn't fly. It doesn't fold into an origami crane or anything like that. What makes this awesome is this ingenious dual screen that swivels over the bottom to give you more real estate and more room to do what you do on your phone. So the big question I've been getting ever since I got my wing is, Hey George, what do you use the extra screen for? I'm like, hold up. Don't you want to talk about the amazing cameras, the sleek design, or Verizon 5G ultra wideband connectivity? No, I've got that. I want to know about the bottom screen. But the front camera pops up out of nowhere and makes this noise that's so cool. Nope. Bottom screen. What's it good for? Well, here's why it's awesome. First up, let's say I'm walking around my neighborhood trying to find the location of a new restaurant. I can easily follow the navigation on the main screen while checking out the menu on the bottom screen. Multitasking has never been this easy. Here's my favorite feature, gimbal mode. This is a game changer for mobile videography. Simply hold the phone from the bottom screen and use the joystick below to create buttery smooth tracking shots that look like they were created with a professional video camera. Group viewing parties have been huge lately and they just get better with the LG Wing. Fire up the Fios TV app on the main screen, then you can use the bottom screen to chat with your friends about, hey, 90 day fiance. Sunday nights, so much more interactive. Meanwhile, gamers can use the extra screen to blow up maps, which are normally itty bitty on the screen, and you use the bottom to control your game and know where you're going. And I can't forget about the crazy front camera. You know that noise I made? It's real. With it, you can shoot split screen videos using both the front and rear cameras simultaneously. This is gonna be amazing for video podcasting. LG Wing will be available for pre-order on Verizon starting October 1st, with availability on October 15th. Check out verizonwireless.com today to find out pricing, promo, and all that other fun information. Until next time, you're up to speed.